All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, welcome back. We're having a look at uh, cultural context and we're having a look at composer's context. Uh, so let's see how we go. All right, so uh, the, the big thing in Germany, uh, certainly in that time, was the, the idea of uh, the Weimar culture. Uh, you know, in, in response to the war and, and the, the depression and the, the hopelessness that many people felt, there was this reaction um, by artists and, and uh, I suppose those more youthful people um, to, to just break out and really do what they want. Um, so Germany was, was a real mecca for artistic endeavor in the 1920s. Um, art was greatly affected by the expressionist movement uh, where you were, you were more able to express whatever you wanted to express rather than follow the conventions of, of art as they had been through, uh, you know, prior artistic movements. Um, Berlin's cabaret, uh, if you haven't heard about it, you'll, you'll hear about it. It was colourful, it was dazzling, it was sexy, and um, it made many people freak out. Uh, Berlin uh, was basically, there was Hollywood and there was Berlin. These days we have Hollywood and Bollywood. Now we've got, uh, back in those days, it was Berlin and and the, the US. Uh, silent films and, and being avant-garde in your film uh, was, was Berlin versus Hollywood. Uh, and the, the last thing is, is this, uh, obviously, uh, lots of new buildings getting built at the time. It's a great time of industrial and economic expansion, um, new architecture, and, and you see that through the film as well. All right, so German Expressionism, uh, the, the, the idea was that uh, it would shock the viewer. It would, it would uh, get them out of their malaise and really get them thinking about themselves, the life, the, the piece of art. Um, they rejected uh, artistic uh, conservatism. Um, and, and they really wanted to, to uh, break with the conventions of, of romanticism and, and, and really create their own thing. Uh, it was bold, it was distorted, it was colourful. Um, there was a great emphasis on uh, clashing between light and dark, which is known as uh, chiaroscuro. I think I'm saying it correctly, I don't know. You need to know how to spell it because it will be in your essays. Um, things are greatly exaggerated in, in the artworks. And many of the artists who participated in the German Expressionism were actually themselves in World War I. So if, if they know any... You'll... So uh, here's just a couple of examples. Obviously on the left here, uh, we, we have uh, a real idea of, of the use of colour and distortion and people everywhere in the painting. And here we have the, that sort of exaggeration of, of society again. Um, Chiaroscuro... Um, in, in the film is, is reflected uh, workers. Um, the workers are in black, the upper class is in light. There's that, that real uh, distinction there, juxtaposition. Um, the scene where Rot Wang captures Maria in the spotlight, there's the real emphasis of light and dark, the candle representing hope, the, the spotlight extinguishing that hope. Um, there's real sort of imagery that evokes suffering and horror. It's, it's a visual representation of, of Maria's entrapment there and the power of, of you know, the man, technology, science. Um, the, in terms of German Expressionism, you have uh, in the Robot Maria dance scene, there's multiple montages of eyes and the, the panting of the men, and just to, to really overemphasize things. Um, there's also the, the scene with the two clocks as well. Um, now, in terms of architecture, uh, it'll come into... Um, once, once you've really watched the film and you, you take in the architecture, you'll, you'll notice something about the cityscapes uh, and, and Fritz Lang is, is representing something that he's previously seen, so I'll go into that in a second. Um, the idea of modernism or the modernist uh, is, is the break with the past, these new forms of expression. Okay, and you'll get to know modernism with uh, Yeats when, when we do his poetry and we look at him going from being a romantic poem to incorporating elements of modernism. Uh, but these are new ideas uh, being represented through, you know, science, education and technology. And basically, uh, you know, people were really shocked with what happened in World War One, and, and they wanted to change the way, you know, they, they represented themselves in their art. Uh, now, for uh, us looking at the film, uh, the opening scenes montage illustrates the technology and... Uh, the, the, the utopian ideals of, of the machine age where machines will make everything wonderful and they're very quickly juxtaposed with the workers to illustrate the idea of the, the dystopia as well. Um, the, the machine montage gives us that idea of ceaseless power and, and you know, within the film the viewer feels part of that machine. Uh, here's Marlene Dietrich. Um, 
once again, shocking. You know, she's a female in, in male attire in this photo. Uh, once again, just trying to shock the public. Um, won't even go into that because that'll come up later. Um, this is the main point of, of modernism within the film. Okay, so while modernism saw an embrace of this new ideas and technology, there's a real mistrust of technology, uh, which is represented in the in the film through the workers. Um, you know that they are held as captives to the machine, and we'll we'll get into that. Um, so Fritz Lang himself, um, in terms of, of religion, he was raised a Roman Catholic, a very strict Catholic upbringing, even though uh, his mother was Jewish. All right, so there was this real. Um, sort of conflict in him, but, but certainly in terms of looking at the imagery of the film, um, there's a lot of, of biblical allusions in there, and that is because he knew all about them, but he knew that his audience knew all about them as well. It, you know, everybody at that point in time, and I'm not really underselling it by saying everybody, it was something like 97, 98% of the population, all went to um, you know, their particular churches on Saturday or Sunday whenever they were and knew full well you know, all of the Bible stories going on. Um, he fought in World War I for Austria, so he had been in World War I. So if anyone understands you know, what World War I's like, it's someone who was in World War I. Um, him and his wife, uh, Tia Bon Habu, um, who co-wrote his films with him, um, they broke up in 1933. This context doesn't help you at all in the HSC, but it just, you know, a bit of knowledge might help you in the world. Uh, she thought Nazis were a good idea. Uh, he thought they were a crap idea. Um, Lang was from uh, the Expressionist Art School, um, and he'd studied art in Vienna. So his art school um, background was coming in and you'll certainly see that in the film um, and yeah lots of stuff happened after Metropolis in terms of Fritz Lang he went to Hollywood he, to escape from the Nazis and made lots of movies but whatever's that doesn't impact on on what we're doing okay the main things you need to know is that he was raised a Roman Catholic very strict religious upbringing he fought in World War One and he had been to art school that's it <laughs>